Hi everyone, and welcome back to the third video in the Autodesk Smoke Stereoscopic Training Series. In the previous video, we examined the timeline and how you could do basic compositing in the nonlinear editing environment. In this video, we're going to be having a look at stereoscopic compositing in Smoke's main 3D compositor called Action. Now with Action, you can go ahead and composite different stereoscopic materials together, as well as monoscopic materials. You can also add 3D lighting and 3D models for added impact. All of this is viewed through a virtual stereoscopic camera rig, which is compatible with other Autodesk 3D products. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to set Action up for 3D stereoscopic compositing. If you do not see the Action button, simply disable the LED on the main pop-up menus and the Action button should appear. Select the Action button and choose None through the pop-up menu. Now hold down the Alt hotkey on the keyboard and click the white cursor anywhere on the desktop. Upon entering Action, the first default behavior is a normal 3D composite. You can go into the Setup menu and under the Rendering Preferences, you will see an option called Reset to Stereo Mode. When you click and confirm the operation, the Action Compositor will completely reset to a stereoscopic mode. Anything you might have had loaded previously will be erased, so make sure you have saved any setups you want before pressing that button. Now Action can load regular footage or stereoscopic footage. To load stereoscopic clips, switch to the Media menu located to the left of the interface and press the New Media button to return to the desktop. We'll first start off by loading in a stereo background. The red cursor indicates the left eye and the blue cursor indicates the right. If you have separate clips for the left and the right eye, you can load in the individual eyes. If you have a stereo clip like we have on the desktop, simply click the top left hand corner of the clip for the red and blue cursor and it will load the media into action. In the media list, you can see that Smoke has placed two entries. With both entries selected, turn off the matte pop-up located to the left of the media list. We will also set the duration to match the length of the background by changing the duration slider to the right of the play controls. Please put on your stereoscopic anaglyph glasses. You can now see that the stereoscopic material updates as I scrub the time bar and press the Escape hotkey to view the schematic. The schematic view shows us the components of the scene and you can see that there is an FBX camera node which is our stereo camera rig. There is also a stereo object. The stereo object is how the stereographic clip is represented in the composite and you can see that the entry 1 is assigned to the left eye and entry 2 is assigned to the right eye. To manually add a stereo object into the scene, you would switch to the Node Bin menu and ensure that you have the left and right eye media selected in the compact media list. In the Node Bin, you would simply double click the Stereo Object node to add another object into the composite. If you only select one source and add the Stereo Object into the scene, you will get an indication that the Stereo Object was incorrectly created and you should delete it and try again. I'll double click on our first stereo object and press the escape hotkey to return back to the stereoscopic result. At the bottom of the interface are the stereo object controls. In the axis menu, you have the typical object transformation controls, but you also have a convergence slider. This slider will allow you to adjust the basic convergence of the frame for the depth perception. Located underneath the axis menu is the correction menu. The correction menu is off by default, but you can enable the manual settings through the pop-up option. This will give you even finer control of your stereo settings, including individual eye adjustments. So let's bring in the green screen shots for the composite. I'll switch back to the media menu and click the new media button to return back to the desktop. Using the red and blue arrow cursors, I will click on the top left hand corner of the green screen stereo shot. This stereo shot has been added into the scene and we will need to key the green screen. To do this, you would enter into the keyer from the media list for one of the eyes by clicking on the keyer column. 
Once again, we can reuse the keyer setup from the previous video to speed things up. In this particular case, we have keyed the left eye. When we exit the keyer, you can see that we will also need to key the right eye as well. All you have to do is select the key option from the left eye, copy, and paste the key into the right eye key column. You can individually tweak the keyer settings for each eye if required. So we have built a composite using the two stereoscopic sources in action. The benefit of action is we can take these sources and place them in 3D space. We can also add extra dimension to the composite by using 3D resources such as lens flares and lighting. Here we have a composite developed a bit further. I have spaced out the 3D stereoscopic material in 3D space as well as added two lights into the scene. You can see that as you move the lights around, it correctly shades the stereoscopic material for greater effect. We can also throw a lens flare onto the backlight and it will be applied to the 3D stereoscopic composite. Because the light is positioned between the background and the green screen, it will react naturally when I move it behind it. The other point to mention is that you can see the stereo depth being created by the lens flare. This is all down to the 3D stereoscopic camera rig in the scene. Very briefly, if I zoom into the top view, you can see that we have a three camera rig setup. The camera output to the right shows us the stereoscopic result. Anything you add into the scene with this camera will have 3D depth. This is really cool and is so easy to add more objects into the composite. There are a variety of controls in the camera object menu as well as specific stereoscopic controls to adjust this camera. Remember you can add whatever you want into the composite as well as animate almost everything for the ultimate 3D stereoscopic experience. To output the result, you would simply process the composite and Smoke will render out the left and the right eye separately. You would then create a stereoscopic clip using the methods I showed you in the first video. In our next video, we're going to be looking at taking a regular composite and creating a stereoscopic composite in only a few basic steps. We'll also be examining the deliverables from Smoke so that you can deliver as well as sign off on your stereoscopic projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next session.